Hello and welcome to No CB, a grand strategy podcast. I am your host, Leanna Hafer, and we have with us today our amazing panelists, including Lambert. Hello there. And including Father Loris. What's up? Hello. Rose, uh, Rose and Rosebud are not with us this week, but we are joined uh, for, I believe, is this the second or third time? Uh, special guest, uh, Paradox's own Groogie. And we can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Great start. Love it. <laughs> hello. Are, are you there? How about now? Yes. Okay, yeah, now we can yeah, hello. Okay. Nice. There we go. Uh, yeah, Grugi's, uh he's doing some some uh, noise reduction sorcery on <laughs> his end to make my Yeah, and I somehow messed it up anyway. <laughs> uh, no, it'll it'll be much better uh, than than. Uh, Trying to edit out a lot of background stuff. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, is this the second or third time you've been on the show, Groogie? Uh, it should be the second time. Okay, yeah, you might be, maybe other than Johan Anderson, you might be the, the, the only developer that's been on here more than once so far, so... Yeah, I mean, I've, I've been uh, lurking in chat several times and True. randomly giving okay. you snarky comments. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> We'd expect uh, nothing less. Uh, well, yeah, uh, the main reason, our main topic today, why we wanted to bring Groogie back on the show is we're going to be talking uh, some more in-depth about the North America rework for EU4. So EU4 is going to be kind of the back half of the show. But before that, we have some other dev diaries and related things to go over, uh, starting out with the latest culture that was announced for humankind, which is the Germans. Uh, based on the description, it sounds like this is like World War One Imperial Germany or like yep. uh, Bismarckian era. They get U-boats, but like it seems like they're trying to draw a pretty sharp distinction that like this is not World War Two Germany. This is like, you know, 1871 to like 1915 Germany. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, it includes something I'm particularly passionate about being from South Wales is a coking works. Um, oh, yeah. Which, you know, <laughs> Love a bit of coke there in South Wales. Yeah, <laughs> oh, it's great. It's great. Oh, but it's all stuff to do with coal. I'm really interested in this sort of thing. It's basically the only history we got around here. Oh, man. But Germany is famous for uh, having, well, especially during Bismarckian times, like huge amounts of lignite deposits. Um. And and stop me if this is completely uninteresting and this is the worst tangent we've ever been on. But like, <laughs> it's, it's very low quality coal and you have to coke it. Um, but as soon as coking got up and running, that's when the German steel industry really kicked off because they could use all this lignite coke to uh, to manufacture their entire steel base and completely outcompete Britain, which was using bitumous anthracite um, at the time. Really good, interesting stuff. Coking I works. Feel like I'm glad it's got some representation. We've gone over that before. Like the differences between the coal in different areas. I feel like that's a Yeah, this is not, I know this of not, this. And you're the only person I know of that knows of this. So <laughs> yeah, how this I is, know about it must be from you. This is definitely not the first time uh that Loris has brought up Lignite on the show. Uh I just <laughs> I just I like Lignite, all right? <laughs> <laughs> lignite I'm more of a bitumen guy the, myself. <laughs> does, does uh does does Tibet have any lignite? I oh don't think so. No, no, sadly. <laughs> now, most oh. of Chinese coal comes from uh, central China, and a lot comes from Russia, actually, and Manchuria. Like, quite a lot comes from Manchuria. So. Oh, yeah. what, what kind of coal is it? I <laughs> think it depends. I, 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 there's no anthracite in China. I know that much. Um, but it's mainly lignite and bitumen coal. Oh. Why there am I are. not surprised that Father Loris can just talk about coal in different countries yeah. to no end? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Coalcast with Father Loris. Yeah, uh, <laughs> this week's special kind of coal is. <laughs> you got like there a subscri subscription subscription about... box where they you know you send out like for for patrons you send out like a different kind of coal every month. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you can get like year. little yeah. little coal carvings. We'll just like make those like no CB style coal carvings. <laughs> <laughs> Debbie Ella in chat is calling us nerds. I don't know where you're getting that from. Uh, I mean, I, I feel I feel like that's kind of very, very rude. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give you a VIP because it's so true as well. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah. So uh, yeah, they're they're the they're they're a militarist nation, um, which was fairly accurate. Yeah. I'm I'm still curious if they're just gonna go straight from like industrial era and then like next era you're just playing the same countries but it's World War Two now. Cause like I don't know what else I don't know what else they would do. Like I don't know how you come up with, you know a whole new slate of nations for the modern era that don't include most of the ones we've already seen for the industrial era, unless they're yeah. doing something really wacky with it, like making communism a culture or something like, I don't know. I don't know. Um, that'd be really like, weird. Yeah. Like that's kind of my, that's kind of like my dark horse theory is that like the modern or maybe just the information age quote unquote cultures are not going to be based on specific nation states. So yeah. I think the big clue will be is if in this um, modern era, we'll get the Soviet Union or not. And if we do, then. Yeah. Yeah. We'll yeah know, Cause basically. we had him, we had Imperial Russia for the previous one, I think, or was it, when was, what, what, when, what was Imperial Russia? Was that, was that industrial or was that early modern? Um, Ooh. let's see. So it was early modern. Yeah, I'm trying to scroll back and see. Yes, it was. It was mm. early modern. So yeah, we could get Soviet Union in this era. I don't know. Um, because yeah, if if the industrial era is also supposed to be the World War II era, then yeah, that's that would be that'd be interesting. But um, I mean, you can't really have um the Germans be in a in a a group that doesn't cover the world war era if you're covering world war eras yeah like if you if you right. got world war 2 as a as a as a as a time slot and the germans have to be in there otherwise it doesn't work so this has to be you know covering that period yeah and you would think that if it was if this was supposed to be world war 2 germany it would probably be a panzer as the unique unit although they have gone with some non obvious ones um maybe a couple of jaegers you know, maybe yeah. it covers covers World War One and World War Two. This industrial era period could be. Yeah, I guess we'll have to see. Um, you know what else I really like to see though is <laughs> uh, all the new stuff for the uh, the Imperator UI that we got to check out. This yes. Week. Oh my goodness. Uh, um, I'm a huge yeah. fan of this. A massive, including fan. a very good picture of a doggo here. Uh, <laughs> yes, that, that is that, that is, dog how... is like my week summed up. Yeah. That is how you dog. He's yeah. he's dogging correctly. You don't tell him that he doesn't know how to be a dog. Mate, don't don't say that. That's <laughs> that means something very different in the UK. Okay. All right. <laughs> it does, I'll, it does uh, I'll say <laughs> this, is, this is like when my uncle went to uh Australia and and, and told his Australian fiance uh, on one of their first dates apparently that he wanted to see her shake her fanny. Oh. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> because in the U.S., that's that's a fairly innocent statement. Uh, yeah. In the Commonwealth, oh dear not God. so much. <laughs> I mean, oh, the, fact, the fact you've got Jesus. a bank called Fannie Mae and also you've got Fanny Packs, endless enjoyment yeah. for me. Love it. Yes. Yeah. Which the Fanny Pack usually does go on the front. So <laughs> that's true. So I guess it's just yeah, more accurate. In fairness, we do put it on the front as well, but we call it a yeah. bum bag. I don't oh, see, know why. Uh, Just it's is. all it's all flipped around. Yeah. Um anyway. <laughs> Americans having things backwards. Who'd have thunk it? <laughs> I apologize uh if if I uh if I offended the uh the, the residents of the Commonwealth uh in, in our audience. <laughs> uh I don't I don't actually know what the I'll have to look that up on Urban Dictionary afterwards. Um but yeah, uh this 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 rework is very good. It's, it's very, wonderful. very good. Like the, the I oh. think the priorities, uh, what we got on the priorities is is bang on. I mean, like including more art, I think this is something that is disappointing in a lot of games now. They don't really I pro programmers are known for not having a high priority on art. I don't know if you agree <laughs> with that or not, Groogie, but like <laughs> well, uh, no, I, I need to disagree there. I think my coder art is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> and it's a shame that it keeps getting replaced by someone, and I don't know why. <laughs> I do remember yeah. something in the HRE um, UI that was really awesome, and then it got you know, fixed to the final version. It was nowhere near as good. I can't remember what it was. Oh, uh, 
I know. I mean, I've done a lot of coder art that has been shown in dev diaries, and then yeah. and then people going like, "Hey, can we actually get this? Like, because it's funny, not because it looks good." <laughs> uh, so I know I've given it to several like different Discord groups that so I have my coder art as emotes there. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, still quite thing- like the crying hats. That's a really good one. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that's the revolution, though. That's the, that's the Phrygian yeah, yeah. cap, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. No. What? It, one. I, one thing I really like about this, um, uh, like that 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 province of uh, Apollonitis, uh, Apolloniatis. Man, it's hard to pronounce ancient names. Uh, or you can see it actually in in the one in the screenshot you're showing too, where it kind of looks like the terrain is dissolving away into a village. I am I'm guessing and I'm hoping that as the civilization value of a territory goes up, more of that terrain image is going to be replaced by the settlement image. That would be a really cool way to show that. I don't know. Population as well might work for that. I don't (laughs) think it's going to be that, but I I could definitely see that being a good thing. Because I feel like this, you don't get to see enough of the settlement picture as it is like it's yeah. crammed way over on the side there yeah um and if they did it that way then like you almost don't even need a civilization value indicator you could just show it visually and then hover over it to see the number yeah, that yeah. Would be kind that's of perfect interesting though. idea um i mean my favorite stuff about it is just the little bits of flair you know i i love that mm-hmm. sort of greco-roman uh twisting uh along the top and along the other side of the text you know and then the slight fading is like sort of chipping away as if it's like a bit of pottery. Yeah. I mean, all these like little details, you know, they, they all add up to really increase the immersion you have in a game, right? Right, right. Yeah. So and although then, uh, like on the surface level, people would not go, oh, the most important thing in a video game for me is little bits of flair like that. But when you when you put these little pieces together, it really improves the game tremendously. And I example I like to use. It's not a grand strategy game, but I don't know if you ever played Alien Isolation. Oh, yeah. 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 The horror watched game. watched a bunch of it, but my heart won't deal with that kind of stress. <laughs> which, is, which, which is fair, but like I think the thing that really makes that game is not so much like the, the, the alien that's coming to get you, or even you know, so much of the sound design or, or the area design. It's, it's the UI that really gets you immersed in the game. It's got that beautiful retro 70s look and it really gets you into the atmosphere of the game without pulling you out of it and and and, you know if if we can get more of that into grand strategy i'd be in love i I absolutely love that sort of thing i think cg freeze new ui exactly the same sort of thing loads of extra bits of flair you know people enjoy this new patch i think subconsciously a lot more than they've enjoyed the previous version because of these little ui changes it feels like a better game subconsciously than it is, you know. Yeah, and I like I just didn't like the kind of beigeness of the interface before. Like I love that they've gone with this like strong red is kind of the mm. the uniting theme. Uh works so much better. Um I would like to see them do a little bit you can kind of see like they're they are they're they're doing a little bit more with lighting on the Antigonus portrait down at the bottom there. Some of these other ones that are a work in progress, I'd, I'd like to see them get the lighting a little bit closer with the background is. Um, mm. But yeah. Uh, Make them bigger as well, so you'd actually be on the full screen. That would be cool. Yeah, that would definitely Apparently be the cool. reason that they don't have that is because there are some, uh, I think, Persian hats that are really rather large and would go off the <laughs> end of the screen. Personally, let it go off the end of the screen. Then I mean... As long as I can see the face, and that's kind of like the yeah. important thing. I need I to mean, see the top of your hat, mate. I fair. mean, if if I were to like make one minor uh, addition, would it would be maybe add a filter onto the background because at the moment there's not enough contrast between the characters and the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, that's yeah. that's totally right. Yeah, I was trying to figure out what was bugging me about that because uh, yeah, the characters in the backgrounds don't look like they they don't quite look like they're from the same game. Um, but <laughs> contrast. Even, even like a sort of little beige filter or like a like yeah. texture over the top of that background, I think would go a long way. But well, yeah. it's like that's such a minor 
uh, right. not even a complaint, if- but like because <laughs> all the rest of it is gorgeous. Look at those buttons. <laughs> Look at the buttons. It's like little dots and, and a beautiful line around all of those little buttons and the flare. Oh my goodness. I love it. It's <laughs> yeah. wonderful what they've done with it. There is some critiques that I would have as somebody uh-huh. who's, who plays quite a bit of Imperator. I don't um, play it, I just look at the UI personally. <laughs> <laughs> from from just a usability standpoint, uh, these pie charts or hollowed out pie charts, I really, really hate. I don't think they are good at all. Oh, but I, was see, say I really the, like the original version where it's just a full pie chart is no better. I think pie charts in general are just terrible. Mm. Why do you hate pie? Why, why do you why? hate pie, Lambert? Yeah. I mean, pie is delicious. I mean, it depends on the kind of pie you're talking about. Like, personally, no, I prefer just... steak and kidney pie, and uh, <laughs> where I come from, steak and kidney pie is bloody uh, rectangle, mate. It's not well, a circle. Uh, where where I come from, uh, steak and kidney pie is actually a very offensive uh, term. No, yeah. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, no, we don't even uh, have meat pies in America, right? The closest thing you got is a hot dog. Which we is... got we have we have a ch- we have the chicken pot pie, which is basically like a sh- it's oh, like a God. shepherd's pie with like chunks of chicken instead of um, ground beef. Um, so, so yeah, I mean they're not as popular over here uh, as they are in the UK, definitely. But yeah, terrible, we do have. Terrible. I mean, yeah. we we also have apple pie. Yeah, I mean that's fine. But like, I still like yeah. meat pies better. You know but what yeah, makes I, apple I would pie get even rid better? Of these circles, oh. they're terrible. Just give me a percentage of like <laughs> the primary culture here. That's the <laughs> that's the important number. Give me these little faces and then a percentage number. Like that looks like what eighty percent, eighty eight percent or something. Show me little faces, eighty eight percent. That's what I need to know. <laughs> That, actually, it wouldn't even be that because uh, this is Seleucus, so it'd be Hellenic, um, would be the primary culture. Little faces, 0%. Little faces, this probably bit little here is Hellenic, 5%. That's what I need to know. Mm. <laughs> uh, Grugi, do, does Sweden have meat pies? Uh, I mean, not to the degree like we have pies and we have apple pie, but not like the Americans and the Brits have. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, no, it's all about the sweet uh, rolls, right? Uh, well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I I think we're more, you know, soups and like pickled stuff. So I mean, if you can make a pie out of something pickled, then boy, then Sweden probably got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Pickle, pickled pie. That. You get a pie oh, in Sweden, no. and then you you just, have, like a pork you pie in vinegar. Whole pie. Yeah. <laughs> Soggy pastry in the oh just no! Big, that's the, make a that's, nice big apple pie and dunk it in brine. Yeah, <laughs> that's the ultimate Swedish delicacy, though, isn't it? You get like uh, you get like a, a cinnamon bun, dip it in vinegar, ferment it, and then yeah, people a bit of rip on over British top of cuisine it. when Sweden exists. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ! Uh, so <sighs> the one the one other thing I thought was interesting about this before we move on is that they've basically blurred out the entire culture screen, which makes mm. me wonder if they're completely redoing the culture mechanics, uh, which seems like a lot to ask. But I was not a huge fan of them, so that would be cool. But nah, see, well, see what they've done here is uh, they've reworked it so that um, it's obfuscated until you can put all the pieces of the mosaic together. Send a spy to your own <laughs> cultural areas. You, know. you see, you don't know what the cultural makeup of your nation is. You got to go out and find it. You got to yeah. do a census. That's what the Romans were doing censuses all the time, and we just get all that information for free. Oh, speaking like, yeah. about obfuscation, before we move on as well, uh, there is uh, in the comments here. This guy is a reply to me who said I don't like to see you know things like uh, this guy's health to the you know decimal percentage i i hate seeing that i don't want to know the exact month that people are going to die um yeah so i, I said basically i want that gone this guy just wanted to second it and then our Heo has gone on a purge to get rid of all these numbers that you really shouldn't have any knowledge of so manpower and gold in the diplo screen when you're looking at other nations uh they're gone health is gone oh. it's just it's everything that i've like really wanted for quite a long time like I commissioned a modder to make a mod to remove all that kind of information that you shouldn't know, uh, and now it's just going to be in the game. So, uh, yeah, that's wasted that's money. Cool. I, I guess. like. <laughs> I love. I love the way CK3 does it, where you just have a little heart that tells you roughly how healthy you are, and then yeah. you get that like death's door 
warning if you're like in really bad shape. Yeah, that's, yeah, no, that's that, how that, I like it too. I, I love the way that CK has done it because yeah, you would have some kind of indication of how healthy you are because you're in your own body. Yeah, so yeah. That, I've that had that notification in real life for years now, and you know, I can really, really feel it. But you know, um, yeah, seeing seeing it for every character that you knowing the exact day they're going to die just never sat right with me. No, yeah, so I'm glad that's gone. Yeah. Uh, well, this is going to be a very art-filled episode today because we also have oh, a Hearts of Iron Four Dev Diary with some very, very good art. Uh, we got we got tons of new uh, national spirits. We got design companies. We got focus icons that uh, they seem to have sort of picked up on the feedback that we've brought up here and other people have brought up, you know, on the forums and elsewhere that some of the newer focus yeah. icons were a little bit too bright and saturated mm-hmm. um no this is wonderful these... this this like fits in right in with the rest of yeah. the game completely i mean like i would say this is like this is great it fits in really well with the game and then that's very much unlike i think the the, the example we always go back to isn't it is the portugal stuff which i think was yeah was an and then why is the finish what? crest here if it's all about turkey i, don't I... Know. Don't um because they're both Does Turkey get a CB uh, on Finland? <laughs> I, I mean, wouldn't it, know why. I know. It's it's because you know Finland is the rightful heir to the Roman Empire, right? I mean that's and, fair. Uh, you know. Turkey has nothing to do with it other than they killed it. <laughs> yeah. Uh I just interesting. I was just scrolling down, just saw that and I was like, oh okay, that's I know what that is. Also, if if you scroll down a little bit further, I think we might have a new winner for the best beard in Hearts of Iron 4. Yes. It's this kid, isn't it? Uh yes, of course. <laughs> uh, yeah, the second the second guy from the left on the bottom row. I don't know yeah, who that is. He's a Greek general. I mean, um I've forgotten his name. Uh but yeah, my goodness. But that's an amazing beard right there, yeah. It's a beast, isn't it? It's beautiful. I mean, it's yeah. a big beard, but I think for like, you know, for aesthetics, I kind of like this guy's beard. Like it's it's pointed. It it shares the contours of the face. It's got that it's a nice good beard. color. It's it's on point. No, that's this the guy thing just about didn't the, really the, do the, anything with his beard. It's just he just let it grow. And that's fine. If you want to do that, that's fine. This that's, guy's put some bloody effort in. <laughs> I that's appreciate the thing that the, the second book that also follows the comp lines of his face he's just got a very round face you know <laughs> yeah, his chin <laughs> is actually down here <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> he's a big um, boy you know he's, although uh, this guy yeah. this guy's beard's and big boys cool need big beards and then uh, and then right below that we have uh, uh, Liberian President Giancarlo Esposito uh, of course started yeah. uh, Breaking Bad as or was uh, very memorable. I was like, hang on, it says Edward Edward Barkley here. What you're on about? I was like, oh, uh, no, now I get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm I'm very excited about a couple other things here. I love that the uh, the Turks, uh, their their tier one infantry includes like a Shamshir. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Lynn in the editing bay. I'm gonna stop here and apologize deeply for calling that sort of Shamshir. Shamshir is a Persian Iranian weapon, uh, not a Turkish one. That is uh, more properly a, a scimitar or perhaps a killage. I'm not quite sure, uh, but you should expect better from us when it comes to identifying specific historical swords, and we'll try to do better in the future. <laughs> like, they're, yeah. they're actually, like, I don't even want to have a research level two infantry weapons because I want my guys to be carrying big ass swords into battle forever. Like, yeah, why did we get rid of swords? <laughs> Uh, I mean, officers still were, uh, you know, <laughs> going to battle with swords. Yeah. Well, there was that one officer. I forgot what his name. Mads Jack something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy <laughs> with the bastard with sword. That's the one. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> bastard sword and a bow. Yeah. 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 Oh, Jack See, Churchill. That was him. Jack Churchill. That's, that's a true. Was it, wasn't he like, right there. like second cousin to Winston Churchill? He was. Or was he like not related, or he was either closely related? One of the two. I know. I know it's a it's a locational surname, so like it could have just been that his family was from the same area, but I don't know. Yeah, like there actually is a church hill somewhere. That, yeah, because like, <laughs> it's. I mean, there's a lot of churches, yeah. and the best place for them is on hills. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's a good way to keep sense. the Vikings out. Yeah. Um, but then we we are uh, we're also finally getting camelry in Hearts of Iron Four, and they have invented a new NATO counter. <laughs> for camels because apparently there wasn't where's what the camelry 
Uh, let it's me right see. at the bottom of a death diary. Keep, keep right going, okay. keep going. It's under the yeah, oh. it's under the battleship. <laughs> nice. Yeah. And I love it's at the NATO counter. It's just it's just a it's a hor- or a diagonal line with a hump. Like I love. That. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Brilliant. Uh, yeah, whoever came up with that. Uh, yeah, hats off to you. Um, How do we get in contact with NATO and inform them of this? Like, yeah, oversight. Come on, <laughs> uh-huh. oversight. I don't know how they do military campaigns over in NATO <laughs> without this without this icon. <laughs> this is the trick. If, also... you, if you ever want to fight NATO, use camels because they'll never be able yeah. to track you, right? They won't yeah. be able to. They'll they won't be able. To, they won't have cavalry. an idea what's going on. Yeah. Uh, ah, we also have be wrong. probably my favorite event icon ever, which is the put. We're putting the band back together, <laughs> where you have to basically reunite the central powers, but it's just it's uh it's i think it's it's uh auditor <laughs> hitler and i i forget who the austrian guy is <laughs> dressed up as the blues brothers <laughs> i don't think that's hitler no i think is that's, it uh, that's I no no that's like hitler that's the austrian fella oh okay so it's not hitler doesn't get to be a blues brother he's not cool enough no uh, i think we can I all think agree they, yeah. i think we'll agree about what the yeah, worst yeah, we can thing about that. hitler he wasn't cool <laughs> He was such a nerd. <laughs> he was. What a what a freaking nerd. Yeah. yeah. I think my opinion of a bruised lovers would go down somewhat if Hitler was a man. To be <laughs> yeah. honest. I want to see yeah. big images of these. Like, show me, show me them big, please. <laughs> I think w- that's the highest w- w- dot Show me them big, please. Dot com. Oh my no, God. don't type that. Do not go there. Do not type <laughs> that in. <laughs> we we need to get that. Um, yeah. Zoom in in hands, please. Yeah. Yeah. yeah uh-huh. ne- need to get the CSI lab to have a look at this. Why is Wilhelm yeah. on the left? Is that right? Oh, it might be. It might be Wilhelm. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense, uh, right? Because it's fair. Uh... Yeah, well, that would make yeah, it. Yeah. To technically put the band back together, it would need to be Imperial Germany, not fascist Germany. So. Yeah. Oh, God. Um, this pie it, isn't is that going to be super hard? Yeah, you'd have to conquer Probably, Germany, right? Probably, yeah. Because you can't get achievements if you set them as Imperial Germany, right? Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to influence that civil war from the outside. No, you well, you can't even trigger the civil war in Iron Man mode. It, you know, yeah, the Germans I mean, always you, go down the historical path. Could you get an? Can you get achievements in multiplayer? I don't. I actually don't know. Yeah, can't, can't you get influence them in some way? Like you can influence uh, oh, other nations. Oh, using spies and stuff. Yeah, to trigger a civil war and all that. Yeah. Yeah, and I then, just don't know send if you can people to help. I don't know. I get you would have to like increase support for non-aligned or something like that. I don't know. The best way of doing it, I think, is to actually conquer them and puppet them. <laughs> I think that's probably Probably. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean that's probably the the easiest way to do it. Yeah. yeah. It's just to conquer all of <laughs> all of Germany and Austria. And As then, is right yeah. for the Ottomans leading the central powers yeah. and so. uh, As it should be. Worst Did achievement you guys have- here is bad rom ants. <laughs> I, I, I hate it. It hurts my soul. Yeah. Oh. oh. Uh, Laura Scroogey, did you have a favorite achievement from this list? Ooh, not really. I don't know. I don't have a pick one. I just like the icons. I just I think yeah. they fit in really, really well. Yeah, I like Dracula's Revenge too. I love playing Transylvania in like every Paradox game, so that's really cool. Um, I'm, just, I'm just gonna have to rep Finland, finish them as Finland defeat the Soviet <laughs> Union without joining a faction. I'm okay yeah, with this. I'm, I love the I'm, icon. I'm definitely gonna have to do uh, the the Kurdistan one. I definitely want to try to do a free Kurdistan run. Mm. Uh, it's gonna be hard. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think like which faction you would want to join to make that happen but uh yeah that'll be fun um it's a shame yeah. that they didn't have the icon be the kurdish flag on a playing card to you know suit house of cards reference like it, it was it was oh. right there it was yeah. right there uh, like that's yeah. literally what you were going for Ah, uh, you need to step up your visual puns. Uh, <laughs> I mean, they don't, but they do at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right, well, uh, we've got one more uh, art-filled dev diary to get to before we move on to EU4, which is going to be our main topic for this week. 
And uh, this week we got a very like in-depth, insightful look into the art process for creating the Necroid ships for Stellaris um, and sort of like how they do the different stages of proofing. Uh, Loris, did you want to talk about this a little bit since you're, you know, you're a visual artist yourself? Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know, I think some of the pre-designs, I think I prefer the one that's like quite bony. You see the central one? You've actually got it on the screen there. Um, there's one that looks like a, like basically like a spine. With is a blade that is it. cool. Yeah. Which the one that's like, yeah. I prefer that actually. And not that I don't like the new ones. I, I really do like how they're quite angular and bladed. You know, it's, it's something that bizarrely we associate with the undeads, probably from lots of sci-fi tropes, but you know, I like the bone ship. I, I want to, you know, if I. <laughs> yeah. I will say this is my favorite one here of all of the art asset things we've seen. I like I like it's, this. Oh yeah. Yeah, that one looks that one looks like the most kind of Necron inspired to me yeah. of all of them. No, no I would I would definitely say no to that. For those, the, really? the Necron ships in 40k are I mean it's basically yeah. pyramids and croissants in space. Mm. Uh, the, the, <laughs> the 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 Necron inspiredness of this is the color and that's really it. Mm. That's yeah, that's probably what I was getting yeah. from it. Yeah. Well, what it does remind me of is kind of, um, I don't know if you ever played Plant Side 2, which was a very poor yeah. sample of Plant Side 1, my favorite MMO ever. But really? regardless, the, the, the art for um, Plant Side 2 was very good, but um, the game was bad. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless, uh, moving on, but the, the design <laughs> for the Vanu Sovereignty ships um, kind of reminds me of that. It's very bladed. Yeah, yeah, very yeah. Alien looking like. I can see that. Uh, yeah. This one kind of look. They should recycle this one here when they eventually do an ocean sieve because it kind of looks like it kind of looks like something you'd find in the sea. Like it sort of looks like a mouth and like fins and shit coming off the back of it. This looks more oceany. I like that. <laughs> also, kind of looks like a dragon head, which I'm totally down for. Yeah. Yeah. Get a draconic oh, race in the future. <laughs> they should do a drag. Uh, yeah, a draconic. Species pack. That'd be cool. They've got isn't, one isn't that just the reptilians? Yeah. They've got yeah. one species in the reptilians some... that looks pretty dragony. There's also one in plantoids right. that looks pretty dragony, but it's got leaves instead of wings, which is totally yeah. yeah, it's a forest dragon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, if there's one thing I've learned from being, you know, on the internet for so long is there's a lot of people in the world who really, really like dragons, maybe more than they should possibly <laughs> should like dragons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so there's a market, at least. Mm. It's pretty bad, <laughs> isn't yeah. it? The people Just going like to have to wait for the much. Fox Fox ship DLC for the real, <laughs> real mean, moneymaker. Foxes are already in. Uh, yeah, there, there is a fox portrait. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, we don't have cat curls yet, though, or cat boys. Yeah, no, we do. Like, There's no. one. He looks very regal. It's one of them. It, he's got a chunky neck. Yeah. No, I, like, I'm actual, pretty sure. Like, yeah, he means the animal. with cat ears. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> those are called those are called felinids, and they're actually canon in 40k. Just putting that oh out there. Goodness. Wait, wait, are they actually canon? They're actually. How did canon, I miss yeah. that? Because they've tried to bury it. Because of oh. course they have. <laughs> Oh, uh, Casey guy is informing me that uh, Catboys and Catgirls mods have already done this. Oh, naturally, yeah, not of, course. Me, of course. So, of course. yeah, it was probably a day one mod. If I'm, if I'm being honest, yeah. yeah. Um, though, Liana, I did see uh, the CC uh, wrote it as cowboys and cowgirls instead of catgirls and uh, catboys. <laughs> Which I mean, that should also be a race, yeah. honestly, in Stellaris. <laughs> Yeah, or a civic, like you're just you're an entire oh, race of space yeah. cowboys, all yes. battle herders. Yeah, yeah, you and could then, hurt, like, you we, could hurt the, uh, the what's it called, the space cow. The t yeah, the Tianki. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be great. I would love that. <laughs> I would love to play that. I just yeah, herd them could, around in space all day. Fine. Yeah, yeah. You could just, yeah, you, you could build like an orbital station that's like a Tianki rodeo. Yes. Just gives <laughs> yes. Unity yes. the whole civilization. Oh, and you can combine it with criminal syndicate, and you can like you know you you could be cattle rustlers. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, oh we're just turning God. we're turning uh yeah we're turning Stellaris into an old west game. It's the new west. It's the future west. I mean that's how we get Firefly, space, isn't it? Old west space. Because yeah. then you have well, depending Firefly. on de yeah depending on how you orient yourself. 
you could think of the Andromeda Galaxy as the West. So maybe that's a potential expansion. It's, it's the new frontier. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have yeah. to go tame the frontier. Uh, and hopefully with more political complexity than, than Mass Effect Andromeda. But um yeah uh <laughs> anything else about the uh stellaris dev diary before we uh get into the meat of our our uh show today i like it i like the yeah. new ship set it's it's my favorite one so far it's nice. it is a really good oh. ship i like it a lot yeah I, this looks gorgeous this is now my yeah. new favorite uh juggernaut beating the avian one it's basically the batman symbol for the avian one isn't it mm. but yeah. this is this is now my favorite this looks all oh, it's just it's just good it's, it's just gonna good. be a lot of fun for when you when you want to play the bad guys like this is the ship set for you like if the there's other ways to ships play? are kind of scary yeah i guess i mean <laughs> like the 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 molluscoid and insectoid ships were already kind of scary but this just like gives off a dread that i don't think any of the other ship sets did so Hey, thank you very much, Mordred, for the raid as well. Hey, it's the Vikings. Welcome. Well, uh, Justin. Yeah, go on. Oh, I was going to say just in time for us to talk about uh, naval combat in EU4. Mm, indeed. Uh, topic. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, this week's uh, EU4 Dev Diary is talking mostly about the naval rework. Um, they are changing galleys significantly that's in, in, in ways that are going to keep them relevant much later uh, in the game, at least if you're fighting in inland seas. Um, they're going to have a lower base combat width, which is pretty huge. Uh, they're also roughly doubling the amount of sailors you get from development, which that, that has just always been a problem mm-hmm. yeah. uh, for it's, me. Is just never, I can never get enough sailors in the late game. Nah, same. Um, it's one of those yeah. things that people complain about. Oh, it's it's so useless until they play a naval power, and then it's like I'd never have enough. Yeah, <laughs> it's useless. Uh, I recently until it played isn't. like it, a multiplayer yeah. game with Spain, and I had all the new world as colonies, and basically I got barely anything from them apart from I was just you know you should Shanghaiing them every two seconds to get all the <laughs> sailors I can of them possibly. <laughs> Um, uh, best change yeah, here, though, um, splitting up generals into army and navy. Yes, it means I'll actually have admirals. It's crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. Uh, there, uh, naval combat width is going to actually change with tech now, and it's going to be lower in coastal sea zones, um, which again will make it very easy to defend Britain. <laughs> <laughs> from uh from any kind of invasion i think um, i think britain's kind of fighting style they'd actually prefer it to be you know deep water with their um you know their galleons rather than their little you know small ships they 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 yeah. prefer a higher uh combat width my my big wish for it and now we've got a developer here i can directly address it yes <laughs> give it to me uh, a map I mean, I think land. Johan is also here, and he's oh. the one that's done the changes. Johan is in chat, yeah. yeah. So, or he was earlier, at least, yeah. Well, a map so. mode for inland seas. Uh, that's what I would really like, my goodness. Well, yeah, you have, you have simple it. terrain map mode? Shouldn't that show it to you? Does it? I didn't know that. I, I think it does. I've actually never checked, yeah. Oh my goodness. Might, it might be, yeah. Well, if uh, I did, that's revolutionary yeah. to me. My goodness! <laughs> I <laughs> think I own. think simple does, but yeah, right. Okay, this okay, changes cool. everything. Yeah, it does. <laughs> I can't, I can't uh, yo, remember yo. if you're right. <laughs> I have me you neither. Says I'm, I'm listening, but I'm also healing WC and WoW Classic at the moment. So <laughs> that's that's uh, yeah. So he's he's multitasking. Uh, he's he's multi boxing. He's got one box for listening to our stream and one for heels. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. Because something that people don't seem to realize, and I didn't realize for a long period of time, but like the coast of China is technically an inland sea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. There's a and a lot of the uh, around Southeast Asia that's getting mm-hmm. reworked. There's there's in, there's going to be a lot more inland sea down there now. So yeah, which is needed. Mm-hmm. Good time. Good time to be a galley. Um, yeah. Keep also yeah, in mind, uh, right, the sailor increase also on ships, right, uh, over tech. Like, you know, as you get bigger and bigger ships, you need more people to man them now. So I think, that's really was cool. it the uh, three-decker needs 900 people or something like that? Which is mm-hmm. insane. Yeah. 
But <laughs> and actually, someone uh, in the dev diary, and I didn't know this, did write the three deckers actually ne- like one of the biggest one did require eight hundred and fifty or so people to man fully. Wow. Yeah. So it's really? apparently not too far. <laughs> That's like as many people on that boat as like went to my high school. <laughs> that's a lot yeah. of it's a lot of crew. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, this all looks great. Uh, Garugi, have you had much chance to to mess around with this yet? Or is this all fairly new? No, th- this is fairly new. Um, but like uh, I know I went through with uh, Bira about like he talked about like uh, he was losing battles with galleys and we went through like oh well this is how the math should work out now so i have a theoretical concept of how everything should work out but i haven't had Got time it. to play okay. with it yet i just and had so a look up. are you are you like uh are you the only person in stockholm that's currently actively working on eu4 at this point uh there is also the tech lead but he's moving to barcelona eventually okay so are you are you gonna stay on EU for for I mean are you even allowed to say what you're, what you're I am I, I I am staying on EU for for the foreseeable future. I'm just not moving okay, cool. to Barcelona because I have a pet hedgehog and it counts as an invasive species in Spain. So that's why. Oh, oh I well, that I, honestly, so, it's, a, it's high is, time Spain a, got invaded. I, I, then that isn't is it? That is a very interesting reason to not be able to move to Spain. Well, that's yeah. I didn't even know. Spain doesn't have hedgehogs. That's, that's oh, no, 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 they do, yeah. but it, it's oh, this, I, like it's a breed of an Algerian one. So that one right, is the, yes, like, yes. yeah. Well, I think oh, it's I been think, a while since th- Spain was invaded. Maybe it needs it again. Just saying. I was going <laughs> to say, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure he would conquer the entire country anyway. So their their fears are probably well founded. <laughs> I mean, it is uh, it is Lord Kairos, the yeah, Shah and Shah, uh, and Emperor of the known world. So yes, he never found it. He never made it as far as Iberia historically, but that doesn't mean he hasn't been plotting a comeback this whole time. Oh, exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well. Um, that was that was uh, what we got from this week. The main reason I wanted to bring Gurgi on, though, was to talk about the last few dev diaries we got about uh, the North America rework, yep. um, particularly like the map changes and stuff. Um, I. I think we've talked multiple times on this. Sh- In fact, I know we've talked multiple times on the show about how it's it's a very difficult <laughs> part of the world to represent just because of how EU4 is set up mechanically, and I'm curious, what made you decide you wanted to take another crack at it? And like, where do you start when it comes to like the thought process of how are we going to make this work? Well, so, right. So since EU3, one of my favorites have always been to play the underdog, the people that didn't win in history, which, you know, tend to involve the Native Americans. So I actually played with them a lot. And then it was... uh, Conquest of Paradise was done seven years ago. Uh, oh my goodness, has it? Yeah. yeah. So it was the first big expansion, I think. Yeah. Oh my goodness, I feel and like I, yeah. this hasn't. And I think it yeah. started with uh, me starting up the game, uh, like playing the Fox Nation, uh, which is one of my favorite nations in the game. Don't ask why. And uh, <laughs> I, I, um, and I just like you know, I just noticed like, hey, some interfaces don't have tooltips. As like the like it's just aged badly, and I was like, you know what? I want to do this justice because it's one of my favorite parts of the world, and I want to try right um, and make it interesting to play again. Which is always a challenge when it comes to like, oh, it's not it's not Europe. It's always going to be a challenge to make it fit into EU. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Upset because it's you know, <laughs> you know, I think it's built from a ground up to represent European nations, I guess. Yeah, and it's like you know, so it's uh, you know what I started to do was I talked with a lot of friends that are really into uh, this kind of history that know this a lot better than me, and uh, did research and so on. And like one of the things I got into was was like understanding a lot of the th- uh, design decisions we uh, did originally was based on you know stereotypes we Europeans have, uh, and yeah. it's like for instance like oh migratory tribes and like how that works and like not having ownership of land and so. I had to dis- I had to start with like well we are gonna we're gonna fix those things we're gonna have to like make it like you are gonna tribes did have a concept of that they own land or like this land belonged to us and then they would have seasonal migration uh, if, to let land recover and so on and then all right how do I make that into a mechanic that works within the game system without like 
ripping everything out, sort of like that. It's it's been an interesting few years for this sort of thing too, right? Because uh, I think there's a, quite a number of games that have revisited uh, Native American uh, things. Like recently, it was Age of Empires three, right? Yeah, that yeah. It's humankind's doing the same, doing like lots of historical things with their Native American cultures. It's really cool to see that in modern games development, game design. But but when yeah, like, approaching the Native Americans in a much more historical and well, I think way. a big like a big thing, and part of why I admired the the Age of Empires three definitive edition so much is they actually like brought in actual Native people as consultants, you know, to to kind of correct some of the issues that you know Age of Empires three obviously is it's a, it's an even it's an even older game than EU four significantly. Um, and they had some like way more <laughs> like questionable stuff in there. Um, is that something, uh, Grugi, that Paradox has ever has ever considered is, you know, bringing in specific culture consultants to talk to you guys about how different cultures are represented in your games? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, really, like because mo- like uh most of our like history, like research and so on, we don't we don't have a history research department that a lot of people in our community think we do. Essentially, it's all of us are history buffs and are very interested in history, and we commit ourselves to that. And then, mm. uh, like, so the person that's scripting these events is also the people that are doing the research uh, for that. So it all what it takes, right, is someone like me who's dedicated and want to do this better, and then reach out and try and find people to help me, for instance. Uh, but I don't, we haven't really, as far as I can remember, or like, no, taken in like consultant like that. We have BDAS that help us, that know some things better than us or can find sources for us. We find sources ourselves. Uh, but yeah, so I think a part of like, as you were saying, like you've s- s- starting seeing um, more games go into like you know fixing wrongs not only with native americans but also like with uh, other cultures that are not that understood it's because we have a lot of like leftovers from victorian histor- history research i think which are start mm-hmm. which is almost like gone well starting to be gone now and we're starting to revisit a lot of these kind of things and that's so why it becomes available to me to find go for it. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so I, I believe the Dev Diary mentioned, uh, you know, like archaeology, which I know is a big thing that we're starting to take a lot more uh, into account now, yeah. um, especially with cultures that didn't write a lot of stuff down. We're finding through modern archaeological advancements that some of the things that were written about them by outsiders were probably not true. Mm-hmm. Uh, where do you start looking for these sources? Like, where where do you go first? Uh, well, so now you're talking about like the native setup, which was done by Evie, uh, who is right. a Bira, and she knows all of this way better than me, right? I wouldn't have been able to actually make <laughs> this happen if it wasn't because of her. Uh, I also have a friend who is, uh, uh, that I'm not going to men- uh, mention their name, but like they know all of these things a lot better than me. Uh, and like they, like I would be spitballing with them and talking and trying to get a better understanding, uh, like just of how and trying to like, uh, may, uh, you know, uh, be appropriate, but at the same time, like try and make it fit into a game. Yeah. That makes so sense. what, what, what was, uh, like, what was Evie's overall role on working on the map stuff? Uh, she did the research. Well, she, all right. So we had talked about this like for a year as like, oh, here's a fun, interesting thing. Right. So I think then if if I'm not saying wrong now, then she started doing research on her own time, like as a fun thing. And then, uh, eventually it came to a point where Johan said, Hey, just add it to the game. Right. It looks cool. And uh, and then I started talking with Evie to like, you know, hey, OK, so we are going to actually add this in. And she then implemented everything into the game. Oh, well, sp- specifically the initial setup, right? Like how you see the provinces and what they own and so on, because she could do that research while I I'm not good at doing that. And then I will be <laughs> doing uh, like all of the code and like how like uh, how which ones are in what federation like she's given me that information so i can set things up so it's going to work as uh, intended okay so and you know i do have to bring this up like i is 
based on what I'm hearing, I, I do want to encourage, and I'm not coming after you specifically, Groovy, mm-hmm. but I do want to say Paradox, like, this map, this work is amazing. And yeah. like, at, at the very least, you should hire this girl. Um, <laughs> like, I don't think it's it's cool necessarily that like an unpaid beta tester did all this work and implemented all of this, and you know, basically just, you know, for fun. I know, I, I guess she elected to do it, which is cool. Um, but yeah, this is a really good map. Um, I'm really excited to play this map, and I hope that she gets some sort of compensation for all the hard work she put into it. Uh, that's that's kind of my piece on that. Um, yeah, of course, but it it's not always <laughs> it's not always possible for everyone that do want to co- contribute and work for Paradox to be actually be able to move to let's say Stockholm. Right, uh, right, and, exactly. Oh, well, yeah. in this case, eventually it's going to be Barcelona, right? But you get the yeah. you get the picture uh, because yeah, there there I mean, are legal like a, there yeah. are legal hindrances yeah. and stuff like that. And like and we do uh, every beta that uh, works on EU4 that actually contributes and do stuff, which we have several that do various different things. Uh, they do get what they work on for free. For instance, like no way they should be paying like for their own work. Mm-hmm. So like yeah. we we yeah. try to do our best to still compensate, and they they get to. They get to play everything before everyone else and brag about it, I guess. Even though we don't encourage them to brag about it because it's supposed to be secret. But yeah. Uh, right, right. That would be that would be the hardest part, honestly. I don't know how some of those those testers like manage to uh, manage to keep all that in for so many years. I've I've talked to <laughs> to a couple of them after stuff was announced, and yeah, it sounds like it's it's. Uh, it's tricky, but yeah. I mean, um, they get to EV see did- me. They get to see me, like you know, implement something, and then go like, "Hey, do you think this is fun?" And then go like, "No, are you stupid?" And then I have to redo <laughs> everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, Evie, if you're listening to this, you did an amazing job. I'm so excited to play on this map, uh, Groogie. Have you? Do you have like a particular? I know you mentioned you like the fox, but do you have like a particular new tribe? That is just like in a really interesting spot or interesting situation. I mean, um, the Iroquois is always cool, right? Because of uh, oh, yeah. their, their history also with the American com- uh, American Constitution and so on. So like the Iroquois is a really cool history. But it is the Fox. And OK, I'm going to say why they f- I first started playing them was because of the stupid joke like uh, that I actually got into the game, if you can find it, is uh, what does the Fox say? But then I actually started researching uh, who they are, and it's like a really cool tribe that actually like uh, fought against the French, and to such a degree where like they won against the French, and the French king proclaimed, and it's the only pro- uh, like a royal declaration of its kind that France has given, where it's like exterminate all of them because he was so pissed, which he didn't succeed with. I think they still exist even today. I yeah. believe so. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that, but I believe they're still they're still around uh, in some some form or another. Yeah, and that does kind of touch uh, on something I wanted to talk about is how the new systems interact with Europeans. So I'm a huge fan of this, like claims but unclaimed areas where Europeans can come and colonize still, which is probably my biggest fear when it came to um, Native American rework that Europeans wouldn't be able to get a foothold into the Americas. But how do the Europeans now fit into into this new rework, um, and how does that interaction work? Is there m- many changes there? Uh, so, so the difference right now is they can colonize it, and uh, the natives can um, can like you know try and resist it and fight it and so on. But in essence, the the hope is and the idea is that they go that the Europeans slowly push them inwards, even if they're not migratory. Because uh, I would have wanted you know because what happened historically was that you would get. Uh, settled tribes that became migratory because of external pressures and external threats. Mm -hmm. Uh, But because of how uh, EU works, that's kind of risky and kind of like cumbersome to make that kind of work. Uh, So instead, like this tribal like ownership should instead allow Europeans to get in, but uh, and push you slowly inwards. Um, Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that was the other thing I was kind of curious about is um, is sort of this uh, it's almost similar to like what happened with the Huns, uh, you know, during the fall of the Western Roman Mm -hmm. Empire, where like a lot of times Europeans would come in and then they would push some tribes west and those tribes would push the tribes to them further west. And eventually a bunch of people just ended up on the plains trying to do their best. Do you find that that scenario 
like can happen or does frequently happen with the new setup? Uh, I haven't like so we usually have uh, like automated uh, nightly tests uh, that so we can see like how, what what has happened over time. Uh, and you you get like uh, uh, so we get snapshots uh, throughout the like that uh, build servers like uh, time when it was playing and we can see what happens. But uh, I haven't uh, had the chance to actually look at any of that. Uh, to see like if that's what happens uh but the main intent of the design like you know that is like a, oh that would be nice if it happens but the main intent is for the player who is uh playing as a native american should have fun which is mm-hmm. the well the second you know and then now i'm aiming i'm aiming at towards like mid-level players like you don't need to be the world's best in order to survive because there's a lot of cheese you can do in order to survive with the old things but here, like uh, I'm playing, I have several different tribes I can fight now. It's not as empty as it was, bef- was before, and I can have fun. And then when the Europeans come, it's not an instant game over. I I have an opportunity to try and survive and try and fight back and maybe even topple them and like push them out. Is there any like uh, benefits you get? So if uh, if you are playing a Canadian tribe, do you get mm-hmm. income from a fur trade or anything? Is there any sort of um incentive for the native americans to at least get the europeans in a little bit but not too much is that a thing at all or i I mean so a thing i've changed is uh that now uh, native americans can adopt the actual um institutions uh you know because uh, native americans they were not dumb right when they saw guns and when they saw horses they went like that's cool i want that yeah. Can, and, can and I can I like trade that to you? <laughs> can I trade that from you? And then became excellent swords uh, horsemen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Swords. Right. So exactly. like so yeah. that, that's why I felt like all right. So maybe so what I did was all right. They cannot develop for uh, uh, institutions, but they can get it spread to them. And if they, of course, if they have a friendly, um, if they have friendly like Europeans, so and that will spread from them to them, and then they can adopt mm-hmm. it. So. They get that kind of benefit, but they don't have, they have no reason to let Europeans stay. Besides, yeah. I guess, tr- now nah, there is not even the trade company system for that you have in Africa and in uh, Asia. So there's not really any like intent to let the Europeans stay. Yeah, yeah. No, that makes sense. I guess, you know, the, the play would be to... Have Europeans come in, you adopt some of their institutions and then you push them out, I guess. But you, you can also you can also completely ignore the Europeans and uh, reform without them is a thing I added. Got you. Because, oh, okay. Yeah, so you can you can become like you know a nation state in a Native American tribes image. And I don't know like how accurate that would be like for them to actually do that, but it's like I within the fr- uh, frame that EU4 gives, I wanted it to be possible for the player to say. Like I am the underdog, but hey, now I am gonna come and kick you out. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. I don't even want to rely on you, Europeans. I'm gonna do it on my own. Yeah, makes sense. It'll make interesting. Have you uh, have you guys ever thought about having a way for them to like reform off of Mesoamerica? Since you know Mesoamerica had a lot of, uh, I guess you could call them institutions that uh, you know the the north of the Rio Grande were not really. Uh, developed yet i've always been curious i guess you can go down you can migrate down there and convert in the current patch um but i've always wondered about about uh like sort of the the interaction that might have happened between north american tribes and you know the aztecs say hmm yeah, so no, I haven't thought up much about that because I think because of the framework that the U4 gives, it doesn't really work because yeah. the Aztec, like so, the Aztecs were s- sort of like a very, like not uh, maybe uh, like the Europeans at the point where they encountered them, but like they were advanced in a lot of different things and have had a different sort of societal structure. But the, what killed them was the plagues and stuff, right? Yeah. And the same, like right, the Colombian right. exchange. And um, that is like really hard to do in in like E4. So let's say, because I was thinking about like for the North Americans, like let's say we actually add a system for that. Now I have the tribal development mechanic. Maybe I can teach the player it's fine to lose some development 
because of some yeah. mm-hmm. bad harvest or like uh, like can't find a herd of buffaloes or whatever something something not enough games in the forest uh but like and then have like when the europeans come you your development just keeps going down keeps going down mm-hmm. but the thing is we now have in u4 everything like that is a disaster and they are preventable like the player oh, can take mm. actions to prevent them because the we have as a like a philosophy player agency should come first the player should be in control of the country and what happens to it and that's why you know you can prevent the dutch revolt now they're a disaster it's kind of hard but sure you can avoid it how would you avoid microbes killing like no, your entire population you <laughs> like social <laughs> distancing <laughs> don't 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 come within like three meters of a white person. Uh, wear a mask, mate. Yeah. Um, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah invent germ because, theory in fourteen like yeah, sixty yeah. eighty something. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, this is yeah. obvi- this is something interesting to me because this was my career before I started scribbling cartoons. Anyway, it was doing you know studying. Uh, I thought it'd been cool, mate. I thought that would be your. Career. <laughs> I wish. I wish. God, I've eighties happened. Yeah. Fortunately, anyway, um, yes, uh, but you know, modeling uh, disease, especially you know one of the greatest plagues in human history, obviously, but after smallpox reaching the Americas and how how that spread through populations of own immunity, is not a real fun way of implementing that, really, is it? I mean, like you know, just having yeah, like I, mean, I, I, I would say it's it's not easy within the like the fr- like you know how EU four works right now. But I right. let, let, let's say you would be able to do it in Crusader of Kings, yes, uh, three absolutely. because you don't have the same relationship with development in your land as you have with development in in EU four. Like yeah. the the player has a higher emotional response to losing a single three development province in EU four than he has uh, like uh, losing a hundred thousand manpower. Yeah, like you have to and think also, about like you how the player also relates to the different values in the game. Yeah. I mean, even CK three losing things. provinces isn't as painful as losing them in EU four. Yeah, I mean, it might no, no, be that, that's what I mean. Painful right? to yeah. my wallet and painful to my amount of troops. <laughs> But it doesn't. It's not as emotionally painful. Yeah. Well, I guess in in, yeah. in Crusader Kings, when you uh, obviously disease mechanics aren't in CK three as much as it was in CK two, for example. But so if we go back to CK two and you have a pandemic spreading, there, I thought that worked really really well, um, yep. and it didn't really hurt your provinces. But lots of your characters died. But obviously, there's no characters in uh, EU four, and obviously, if your admiral dies from a plague, it's not gonna it's not gonna have a huge impact. Yeah, so, yeah, it's it is what it is sort of this. Yeah, because I've I've contemplated this at length. Like, how would you actually model this in a game like EU four? Because it's like you you would almost need to create a new type of tag that has different goals from everyone else on the map. Mm-hmm. Like your gameplay is more about like keeping your culture alive and like forming treaties that will allow you to like preserve certain aspects of your sovereignty because yeah you like you you are going to lose 90 percent of your manpower you're not really going to be able to fight wars you know effectively against the colonizers yeah it would be really tricky like i mean if you gave me a whole bunch of money and it's a lot of people who are way more talented than me i could probably figure out a way to make it work and unlimited time obviously Mm -hmm. um yeah eve 4 is definitely a tricky game to to get that story right from the side of the people who were, you know, on on my side of the Atlantic uh, at the time. Um, yeah, it's it's almost like, yeah, you would need to create a new a new thing for the player to become invested in. That is not what most other nations yeah. in EU4 are, are invested in. And I, I was trying that with uh, tribal development. Uh, yeah. And so like, but it, it still became this like, you know. <sighs> Like it's tribal development, if I can make that be a value that fluctuates up and down and you don't have to feel invested in it, that still means if you have then, because how it works now with when a tribe is settled, you can invest that tribal development into a province uh, and then that's stuck. Um, so like, and then you get into the same, like, well, I just got an event where I lost uh, 10 development in these provinces. Well, I'm just going to reload, right? Like, and then it becomes like not the thing that exists at all for the player anyway. Yeah. 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 That's true. Um, 
I'm also curious with with uh, some of these that used to be single tags, but are now these multi tag federations like the Iroquois. Mm-hmm. If you're playing as like the non dominant tribe, mm-hmm. is that like what what does your gameplay look like? Like, are you trying to become the dominant tribe in the federation? Can you kind of just chill? Like, what are your goals there? Uh, if you're the non dominant tribe, yeah, I mean, I guess you can become the you can just chill uh, until like you. Uh, until you get to the point where like you you get nation reforming like you know where you start to become uh, nation states but otherwise um uh you i you can leave you can chill you can try and become the new leader but in essence like you do kind of want to have a high cohesion on the federation so you know that the leader and the other allies will be able to keep you together but it's not something like super complex the other thing I was going to I was I wasn't sure about is the the plus one cohesion modifier you get for having nearby Europeans. Is that is that per colonizer? Like would France and Britain give me plus two or yeah. is it just I get one freebie? OK, yeah, cool. you, you, you get one for each uh, each different uh, like and this will also apply, I think. Right now in how it's implemented. So if you have a reformed uh, tribe next to you, they will also count for this. Oh, interesting. OK. Uh, so when you do these nightly tests, do you see the like, do you ever see North America like kick the Europeans out by the AI or is that something no. that the player would probably have? To no, do? Okay. Th- that is most probably something the player will have to do because the decks are still stacked again against the Native Americans. But what I do, what, what I do remember seeing is that like they survive for a little bit longer than they used to. Uh, OK, but yeah, but that's about it. Yeah, because I think of the current patch, like I, I, I don't think I even really pay attention, like to the <laughs> to the North no. American tribe. Like I just assume my colonial nations will deal with it eventually. And uh, yeah, no, yeah. I, I th- uh, but I think also like it, there, there might be a case that they are surviving because there's just simply more tags, right? So it right, do, it doesn't yeah. need to be because of the like you know changes in mechanics or anything, but there's just more tags, which makes it more likely that more people will survive. Do you think I know it's possible to see the future? Do you think this will be fairly close to the final iteration of North America in EU4? Or is it something that you still have things you'd like to do down the line, even just small stuff? Uh, I mean, there's been a lot of criticism, like, you know, why is this tribe not here and this here and this here (laughs) and this here? And it's like there's always iterations that can be done. Right. But Uh, I uh, like uh, so the question there just becomes if anyone has time and effort to do more then more will happen, mm-hmm. but I would guess probably not. Like, it's... I'll probably... Uh, it's it's still, like, you know, this is not an area that's played a lot, and this might be, you know, catch-22, because it's not the most fun place to play, but... And we'll see, maybe after this, uh, the changes, maybe a lot more people will play America, and then we'll see, like, you know, oh, hey, maybe we should invest more there, but uh, I doubt it. See, I, I'm all for it. Like my first game of E3 was as the Iroquois mm-hmm. and my first game of EU4 was as the Iroquois. Right. And that was back when there was nothing to do <laughs> in either of those games. <laughs> so I'm glad that they've gotten more and I will always be happy mm-hmm. to see them get more. Yeah. I do you think this uh, design philosophy for, you know, when it comes to colonization, allowing the Europeans basically a, a foothold in a way, allowing yeah. the games to be fun as the natives and but allow... Do you think that would be applied to the rest of the world in any any future way? How, how do you mean? Do you mean like uh, having a semi presence like in a province, like, like a trade city like or in, something in India or so? On? Yeah, yeah, or something, yeah. something like that, especially um, in like um, Southeast Asia. Uh, you know? Let me just tell you how much effort it was to make this semi ownership work for tribes and making it for India and China would be completely different from that. So yeah, I imagine. <laughs> it would be it would require a lot of work to make it happen. But it yeah, would be I cool. Imagine. I will agree to that. But mm. it's not as simple as you might think it is. Yeah. A suggestion so, so, I made so, before so, as well was Sweden should have that kind of control over the Sami areas uh, oh, in the north. Yeah. Yeah, no. Hey, it's so- like Siberian frontiers for Russia. Just saying, yeah. yeah. Uh, very much a case where they drew lines on a map, and there wasn't really a lot there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and they didn't, um, didn't do those maps very well. <laughs> yeah, this is ours now. Like, uh, nobody complains. 
Yeah, like I'm when, probably, when I'm, the rest of the world was still exploring, exploring the Far East, I guess, like, you know, when Captain Cook was stuff, they just threw out their Russian maps because they were completely useless. The Russians just went <laughs> went full ham and didn't really pay attention to where they were yeah. going. Captain Cook was from uh, uh, Middlesbrough, where I'm from. Uh, oh, was he? Oh, mm. uh, yeah. It's like our only well, trick claim to fame. Uh, well, you know what you have to do now? You have to go to Hawaii and get eaten. Uh, this is the fate of everyone from Mid- Middlesbrough. I'll pass on that one, thanks. I'm I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> it's a final destination well, they... of all, all Middlesbrough people. Look, Hawaii is very hot, and as someone from Middlesbrough, heat sucks. So yeah, yeah. I'm just going to stay in cold <laughs> places. Thank you very much. It's probably a blessing. Well, the tribe, uh, the tribe that lived where I'm from isn't on the map yet, so I might have to mod in like the Utes and maybe some but, of the other Eastern Rockies tribes. But isn't that uh, the wasteland right now in the game, I think? Because I, lo- I looked it up I, I when might... you tweeted at me. So No, you're right. It, 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 it barely Their territory barely touches the province that's, I believe, called Arapaho. To be uh, honest. So I might mod in one extra province to the west of that just so I can put the ute in there. <laughs> to be honest, on to be honest I thought it was wasteland today, to be honest. Like <laughs> <laughs> I mean there I mean once you get once you get over the front range, there really still is, are not a lot of people living there. Like it's a lot of ski resorts and stuff. But like <laughs> yeah, there's still there still is not a lot of permanent population in most of the American Great Basin. Yeah. So when's a ski resort yeah. getting added to EU4? That's what I want to know. <laughs> One thing I will say that have, I don't think we've you have mentioned to own yet. a province. You you have to own a province in the in the uh, Great Basin region and have Norwegian culture, and then you can set up ski resorts. <laughs> One thing I'll say so we haven't mentioned yet is mountain provinces or, uh, you know, wasteland provinces where there's mountains on the east coast of America. Oh, that yeah, has been that's so needed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Because, I love it. I love yeah. those changes. Yeah. Because I've played a lot of multiplayer where I've been on the east coast, uh, like as a colonial nation or some Native Americans. And then it's like, you know, all right. And then when the big wars start to happen in the world, and then someone lands in east coast and it's impossible to defend because everyone moves so quickly, everything is flat and so on. And it's just great to finally yeah. have some actual defensible positions that you can fall back behind. Yeah. Like, I, I believe I remember uh, reading somewhere that to get from the likes of where the Miami tribe is to where New York is, the fastest way wasn't going in a straight line. It was to go um, further west until you got to the Mississippi River, go all the way down that, around the coast of Florida, and then go back up again. And that like cut off weeks off your uh, travel time. Just getting over those mountains was basically impossible. Yeah. Especially with like a large army with like limbers and horses and stuff, the Appalachians are not the best place to be. <laughs> <laughs> have you uh, have yeah. you correctly modeled for Appalachian coal reserves, though? Because oh uh, Jesus, not <laughs> Christ! I mean, I mean, there is coal. There is coal. Ah, yeah, but is it the right? I mean, type it's of uh, coal there's cookie? a lot of coal in I think what is today Pennsylvania. I think, for instance. Yeah, yeah, it's also uh, very high quality coal. Damn for yeah, Gro- you know? Gro- Gro- Groogie, how can you guys get away with having only one type of coal in Eve? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, I mean, I know, I know. Uh, when we first added coal, a lot of people got pissed because we didn't have coal in Sardinia, and w- our reasoning was because I think that coal was not suitable for the thing yeah. we were trying to model, right? Yeah, I so, believe it's lignite in Sardinia. Yeah, <laughs> Sardinia. Okay. yeah, exactly. So, yeah, I think uh, Amphrasite should have a have a bonus to. <laughs> So, like goods produced. Yeah. So, 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 what you're saying essentially is we should have brought in for the Loris as consultant for Welsh culture yeah. around coal. <laughs> yes. That's right, yeah. yeah. Give Wales well, a production bonus. Should, yeah. As much as you complain just, about coal, I, I just have to point out that coffee is a as a trade good, but bloody tea isn't. Tea is a trade good. Is a trade good. Then yes, I'm, it is. Wrong and I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. is. It's just, <laughs> it's just worthless, just like tea should yeah. be. Oh, right, really? Grugi <laughs> is now never coming back on the podcast. Executive decision, right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I always I always gun for all the trade events for tea, you know, because you have to have uh, tea and sugar. I believe bumps up <laughs> quite a lot. Oh man. <laughs> It's it's a, uh, it's a game about acquiring coal and tea. That's what EU4 is about. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so I, Gro- Groogie and I obviously are kind of nerdy about like pre-colonial North America, but I'm curious, Lambert and Loris, do you have a tribe you're interested in playing most when this comes out? Clearly it's the one with the best flag, Iroquois. 
There you go. I mean, I, mean, I, I, yeah. I know very little about any of the tribes. Do you know which? Do you know which of the Iroquois uh, nations you want to play? The one with as, the best though? flag, mate. Mohawk. You want Mohawk? <laughs> it's it's the one with the blue. The yeah. blue that one there. Yeah, Mohawk. Because he's really cool go. flag. Yeah, they're the first defense against the Europeans, so yeah, yeah. gotta be ready. And I believe didn't the Iroquois Federation also fight on the side of the British against the Americans? Yep, they did. Well, yep, that makes that them one. just that even better. <laughs> I just elevates them bro- even further. Yep. Best flag fought on the correct side. I mean, you can't get better than that. Eventually, they did. They did break up, and like the different nations took different sides. But yeah, the the Confederation did definitely fight with the British initially. Yeah. Um, well, I'd, I'd probably be more excited about uh, the uh, West Coast stuff. Um, probably play the Salish or something, and then. Seeds. I don't think they've changed at all from no, what I know. Uh, I know they haven't I mean, changed. I mean, they're still going to get the mechanics right, but I don't yeah, think the, the we've Salish changed the, the Hida, Yeah, but that's why I'm, I'm, the Salish I'm, and the Haida are a lot of fun. I'm excited to just play on the West Coast and then see how the world changes on the West, and then hopefully build up a power base that can push them. I mean, uh, no, 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 no. You should know? obviously you should play as the Comanche and become the freaking Mongol horde of North America. Yes, oh, yeah. yes, okay. I've recommended uh, I've recommended the book Empire of the Summer Moon before on this podcast, which is about the actual Comanche. Uh, I guess you could call it an empire that existed in the American Southwest. But go read that book, and it'll get you excited to play as the Comanche in EU4, especially since they could become a horde now. Can I recommend... Definitely going to do that playthrough. Can I recommend I, I, an achievement as well? You see how Micmac is all the way over there in uh, like the, the furthest east uh, tribal nation? It'd be cool if there was an achievement to you know migrate them over to the west coast while owning like, a fewer than 20 provinces. That'd be pretty fun. Hmm. Yeah, I did... Uh... Uh, the uh, when Rajas of India came out for CK2, I actually created a challenge where you had to start as uh, Shanti Deva, who was the furthest east character on the entire map. And by the end of the game, your realm had to consist of only Iceland. And you could only own land in two de jure kingdoms at any one time. So it was like an exodus campaign. So I love that idea. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I, I remember uh, when... Um... Uh, we did Riders of India, and I implemented the supply system for CK2. And I, 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 I was, I was dumb, and I just said like, "Ha! Now you guys won't be able to walk all the way from uh, Europe to India." And someone figured out because that if if they just raided the entire way, they would keep <laughs> refilling their supplies, and they there would eventually get there. You're basically a horde at that point. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I mean that's what the Crusaders did. Yeah, showing up in Hungary, like, uh, hey, guy, hey guys, uh, this is Hungary. Hey, we're 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 Catholics. Hey, we're we're hey, we're Catholic. Can you not? <laughs> can you put that down? Can you can not you light stop? our fields on? You're supposed to be fighting for Christendom here, and we're the same. All right, <laughs> hang on. We're just. I'm gonna try to get the Pope on the line here. Uh, clearly, there's been a misunderstanding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And we don't talk about uh, the fourth. Yeah, yeah. I, to I mean, be fair least, to the Crusaders, they were Hungarians, uh, so you know, you uh, know, it's that aspect. At least the Fourth Crusade was like Catholic versus Orthodox. Like the it first wasn't Crusade, to be, they were just like it wasn't supposed straight to be. up pillaging Catholic <laughs> countries, the Catholic countryside. Yeah, it's funny. A um, few weeks ago, I was talking, or I saw somebody um, on Twitter who said that there was only three Crusades, or he was talking about the Crusades, and like, oh, that's why they stopped after three. And I'm like. Do you actually know that there was like a lot more crusades than just three? It's like, no. Like he legitimately thought there was only three. And I was like, well, in fairness, if I had to think, you know, of a, a cutoff point where <laughs> everything after it just blank out that memory, you know, ignoring the fourth crusade and anything after it seems like a pretty good idea to me. <laughs> uh, but well, the, I mean, uh, wasn't wasn't there like twelve crusades? It depends well, if you yeah, count all the also... individual little ones, like the Peasants' Crusade and the Children's yeah. Crusade. But and... then before that, you have the Northern Crusade, yeah, and then exactly. you have the, the Spanish yeah. Reconquista. Is that a crusade? Yeah, I guess, yeah, I guess the Cathars, yeah. too, myself yeah. of France. I think yeah. for the ones that are directly, you know, there's claimed cru- to be yeah. for Jerusalem, then there's like 8 to 12. Well, and there's also just Crusades. Yeah, there's Crusades claimed by the Pope, and there's Crusades that are just like... 
some king is like, yeah, I'm going on a crusade yeah. now. And then sometimes, yeah, is that, does that count? I think that's what Richard crusade? the Lionheart did. Uh, um, like he, yeah. he called his some own of the crusade. Da- the Danish, yeah, some of the Danish conquests in the Baltic were ostensibly under the banner of crusade. But yeah, they, um, it was more than just wanted an excuse to, to beat up some pagans and, and take some more land. Yeah, I think um, almost every... European <laughs> war has had some sort of crusade attached to it. And so also sort of a it. place to be able to send your son that you hoped you would never see again. Yeah. 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 I go. mean, everyone who's played CK3 is... knows the pain of having too oh, yeah. many sons. Sending them away to, you know, maybe take some land over there instead of splitting my realm up into several many pieces. Uh, it's a good idea. Yeah. Oh no! I just I just put him I just made, force him to be knights and put him at the front of the battle. Yeah, that's, 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 yeah. that's what I do. I, I'm like Denifor, like charging Faramir into the breach. <laughs> and the you know, stress like, just yes. climbs and climbs. Uh, yeah, I got really yeah. lucky recently. Well, uh, I had a really good son as my first character, uh, first child. Um, he had genius. He was hail. He was awesome. Absolutely stellar character. And then I had nine other children. All women. It was great. <laughs> there, yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, because then you know, it, as long as he survives, you're not going to get a partition split. But then if he dies, suddenly you have a nine-way partition split. He, so it's, he it's did. A lot, he yeah. did survive um, up until about a month after he took the crown, and then he died in battle. There yeah. you go. You know, you win some, you lose some. But yeah. yeah. Well. Um, Obviously, we don't have a release date for any of this EU4 stuff yet, but Groogie, is there anything you would like to plug or uh, any any like smaller feature that is coming in the update that you think might have been overlooked or not commented on enough? I'll let you pick. I mean, I mean, I want to point out that uh, Johan in his dev diary, he hinted about that next dev diary. I'm going to talk about why hedgehogs are holy, and I think that's important. And that, okay. and and if you know your history, you should be able to guess exactly what that is about. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know enough hedgehog related history, I think, to know off the top of my head, but I'm sure some of our listeners do. Uh, you also so, so let uh, me give you a hint. Let Let's think about the. Uh, I have a hedgehog, and is named after a certain emperor in time. Cyrus. And that should give you enough of a hint, I think. Uh, So maybe some reworks to Persia, then. Um, It's going to be turned into (laughs) an entirely hedgehog and anime-based civilization. (laughs) No, Groogie? Oh, no. Uh, (laughs) Oh, no. Oh, no. Father Lord's figuring it out. (laughs) It's going to be anime waifus all over you four now. (laughs) Just add add, uh, add add waifu as an institution that spawns in Japan. Yes. Uh, when you get to a certain diplomatic tech level, and then you have to spread waifu. You only get it after you conquer manga. Uh, yes. Embracing, <laughs> embracing waifu actually decreases your fertility because you go to the body pillow. But it's, yeah. Um, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh my anyway, god, I have just uh, ha- no CB cast used, add permitted term waifu. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> I, you know what? To- my job is done. Like, this is all I want. <laughs> He came this on is to the this only podcast. reason he came on the show was to get waifu added to her approved terms list for auto moderator. Why is it? Why was uh, it like not? I don't. I, you know what? I don't want to know. I don't want to know. Funnily enough, <laughs> I don't want to know. Yo, Johan stands is standing strong in the chat. It's no anime in EU. Johan, uh, stand so. strong. You, you uh, no. have my sword. So if I, have I, one. I forgot my boss so, is actually watching this. Shit. Yeah, Lam- <laughs> Lambert, Lambert has uh, Lambert has joined the uh, faction against the tyranny of King Johan. No, no, no. I'm with uh, Johan. Asking- I'm with Johan. Oh, with Johan. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. You keep the anime okay, stuff so- out of EU four. <laughs> we're, we're requesting increased anime authority in the realm. Um, Look, I said it's a sword. Anyway, uh, it's, it's more like um, a kitchen knife. <laughs> no, I have uh, not studied the blade. <laughs> so, like, if you if you haven't played Wife of Universalis, I'm gonna plug that. If you haven't played Wife of Universalis, I mean, you, should, you can link it because yourself. it's more it's more than just art. 
which is also handmade by one person and is amazing. <laughs> but also, it's also like Shane just, you know, so it's not great powers, it's main characters and like oh it's uh, uh, Pope Sama and um, uh, Night Chan and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Johan is saying in chat that he has two swords and you have zero, Groovy. So I think. <laughs> yeah, that's how true. How long have you been at Paradox? You're gonna need Don't you to get one study the blade years? if you want this. Uh, yeah. I've been here for seven and a half years, so I'm two and a half years uh, left until I got my sword. Uh, unless Johan now cuts me down because of all of the <laughs> weed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he now has an imprisonment reason. Oh, yeah. Um, Loris, what have you been up to and where can people find your stuff? I have very uninterestingly just been working on my house all week, so nothing interesting to anyone apart from me, sadly. But uh, Grugi, you you worked on a um, uh, game jam recently, didn't you? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, though it was uh, like so, uh, it was this weekend. Uh, but uh, the theme was uh, stuck in a loop, and it was the weakest one for me. I had no idea on what to do there, so I tried to de- make uh, like outer wilds, but a platformer, and it didn't work out. Hmm. Yeah, but it was still fun. Still learning. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. Uh, Lambert, what have you been up to and where can people find your stuff? Um, I have been a little bit sick recently, so a lot less streaming than I have been hoping to do. Um, but there's a lot of CK3 on the channel, and um, I have recently, just today, started streaming some uh, Baldur's Gate 3. And I'm going to be playing that like every day while my son's at daycare, because it's amazing. Nice. I am I am really enjoying Baldur's Gate 3 yeah. uh, so far, yeah. I haven't I haven't streamed any of it yet. What what uh what character are you playing? Um so I'm I recently got into D&D as well and my character there is a wood right. elf rogue called Thranria. So I basically recreated him uh in in Baldur's Gate. Although nice. I got to level 3 and was uh quite disappointed to find out that I couldn't take assassin as my roguish archetype, which was a bit disappointing. So I've I've gone with thief instead. Yeah, the there's only six classes and the archetypes, especially for like clerics and uh, wizards, are pretty limited. So uh, it's early access. Yeah. I'm 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 assuming they're going to add all of that stuff in later. But yeah, I'm playing an elf, high elf wizard. Uh, wizards are so much fun in Baldur's Gate three, just because there's so much stuff you can do with your utility spells, like that just like wouldn't matter in other in other uh, computer RPGs. Like you can just like jump on top of a roof to like completely bypass yeah. like a group of guards and you know yeah it's it's a lot of fun uh so i've been playing that uh over on uh i haven't actually been playing baldur's gate on twitch.tv slash lorsworn order but i have been playing uh quite a bit of ck3 uh we restarted our sami game because they made some changes to that area that makes it way less politically weird in the 1.1 patch you don't have like so many like super dukes anymore um uh so yeah having a lot of fun with that trying to form the 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 sap me kingdom and uh try to uh hold the true north against those uh those those vile southerners in like finland and sweden <laughs> they're uh yeah they're 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 all southerns to us yeah, yeah. at the top of the world be, yeah. being so, from I mean, northern uh, england i totally understand the <laughs> north south divide yeah yeah uh yeah we're the true northerners uh um, see it's the opposite and, uh, in wales yeah. south is for truth like welsh and the north for like the the heathenist wretches you know that's how it works here anyway. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sure that's how people in the south of england see the people in the north yeah of they yeah. might do but, but we wrong. don't care what they think <laughs> <laughs> Um, anyway, you can follow the podcast on SoundCloud, Twitter, Spotify, YouTube, iTunes, Twitch, Stitcher, we're no CB cast. Uh, and, uh, yeah, um, follow, follow the channel. Uh, do, do we have, you can subscribe now, right? That's a thing. Um, didn't we get a f- affiliate at some point? I think you need line, to set still it up first, but we, we have the ability oh. to affiliate. <laughs> oh, okay. So that's well, my fault. Yeah. Affili- uh, affiliating <laughs> spirits anyway. <laughs> Yeah, um, it, it might come as a shock to you guys, but sometimes people have to harass me for a long time to get me to do basic tasks because <laughs> I have severe ADHD and uh, executive dysfunction. Anyway, oh, see, um, I, I, my excuse is I'm just lazy. That's my, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> my take, take that. 
yeah, no, I'm all about pathologizing my laziness. Um, <laughs> anyway, we'll see you back the same time next week. And uh, thanks for tuning in. Bye bye. And oh. thank you to Groogie, of course. Welcome back every time, anytime. Yeah, love awesome. being yeah. here. Well, yeah. Well, as long as you get rid of them bloody waifu universalis mods, you can come back. But until then, <laughs> until then, <laughs> off with you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. All right, take care. It's all right.